Greetings and welcome, everyone. It's All You Can Geek Movie Cast, episode 392. I'm one of your hosts, Jim Gast, joined by Corey Feinsod. Yo. And Tony Korkanakis. Destiny Arise. What's up, guys? Uh, this is The Week. And if you don't know what week I'm talking about, then I don't know what rock you're living under because this could be the biggest movie ever in a box office weekend. Um, could be. I'm not saying it's going to be, but I think it will be. Um, but yeah, so Infinity War opens this week. All of us will have seen it by next week, so expect a definite spoiler cast. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think you can not have a spoiler cast with this one. It's yeah. been, we've waited 10 years. Come yeah, on. 10 years in the making, guys. Uh, we're going to do some fun stuff today for our Marvel, um, the history of it. Uh, we're going to go over that. Yeah, um, take a look back a little bit. Yeah, a little retrospect. Uh, but first, let's really quickly talk about the box office. Mm-hmm. This is the calm before the storm. So, uh, or the quiet. The quiet place. before the storm, <laughs> yes. Uh, so A Quiet Place was number one at $20.9 million, doing very well, actually. Very well. It's, like, it's just holding so, so well. But so is Rampage. To... Rampage is actually holding very well. I'm at a loss for words right now. It is. So Rampage broke 300 million worldwide um, last week. Uh, it's doing actually very Power well. Power of the Rock. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, I think he does have some draw still. No, I mean, he definitely has draw still. It's just we'll see how Skyscraper does. And obviously, uh, Baywatch was a flop, but. Yeah, no, I mean, I you know, can't draw. Think... You can't win them all. You, you definitely can't win them all. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I think he does draw people still. I really do. Uh, maybe like the failure of of um, Pacific Rim. Like people are like, wait, I want to see some monster, like huge monster things. And like, oh, well, this thing's out because I can't go see Pacific Rim. It's not in theater anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, if well, I'm going to see something not Infinity War, it's going to be a quiet place now. Uh, yeah, I would say that. It's true. But um if you've already seen A Quiet Place and you want something more, see Ready Player One, quote unquote, fun. Ready Player One. Okay, I agree. I agree too. I'm just saying, like, people probably not that. I don't think the majority of people realize it's a movie based off a video game either. I think they they just see it as a rock spectacle. Yeah, Um, it's it's doing very well for a video game movie. Let's let's give it that. Mm -hmm. Give it that props. Um, but yeah, anyways, kind of, like I'm disappointed that they, they're not real people that turn into monsters. Like, come on, yeah. um, that, that would make it more interesting. They're yeah, yeah they're yeah, their creatures turn larger. Um, so, anyways, uh, back to a quiet place. That was number one, and that's uh, actually you know pretty impressive. As we were saying, I kind of brushed past that, but it is very impressive mm-hmm. what that's been doing. A very good holds. See what happens. It looks like right now, and with the exception of like. Rampage is doing very well for its hold. It's not doing extremely it's done. well. It's done. Yeah. It's done after this weekend. It's not doing extremely well, but I would like to it's say It's done after this weekend. We yep. have a good it's over. We have a good trend in the theaters though with holds now. If your movie is good, it seems to have very good holds. It's done. I'm talking about a quiet place, not for Rampage. It's it's done. <laughs> They're both done. Well, it is counter programming, but I agree. It's over. Like it's had its it's had its run and now there's the one true king. That's it. Mad Titan. Yeah, that's right. The Mad Titan is a more accurate um, uh, description there. So, uh, yeah, I feel Pretty at 3, Super Troopers 2, and Blum's House, Truth or Dare, is your 5. Um, like I said, Calm Before the Storm. So opening this week, Avengers Infinity War. We've got uh, – we wanted to do a little bit of a Marvel rundown here. And I think before we get into the Marvel, let's let's quickly talk about something we mentioned, I think, a couple podcasts ago about Allison Mack, the uh, uh. former – smallville star well, i think we mentioned that like her the, the cult leader got yeah. arrested and now and now she's been arrested and brought up on many many federal charges uh of uh being part of this whole sex trafficking ring uh that they were like tricking women into going there and and uh it, it's 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 crazy crazy unbelievable to, to hear this was going on um so um, tricking women into trying to become actor actresses and, you know, basically using them. Casting couch. Yes. That's essentially Everybody what they were doing. Everybody in Hollywood is terrible. Just it seems so. It seems so. And apparently, like, Kristen Crook or whatever, she's the one that got Alice Mack in here. She's the one that brought her in. <laughs> Great. So she's just as bad. Great. Kristen I think Crook. she got out, but hmm. she's not in it anymore. But All right. Uh, uh, who knows? Uh, 
Weird. Weird stuff goes on behind the scenes. Yep. Speaking of weird stuff, other stuff not Marvel but Marvel uh, is the Venom trailer came out. So not Marvel but Marvel. You know right? what, like the the screenshot of like the trailer image of you see his you now see Venom. Way yeah. we get to see Venom. Yeah. Uh, it reminds me of a Halloween mask that you would find at like one of those pop up Halloween stores. I think that's uh, what it reminds yeah, me of. I think that's pretty I mean, accurate. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would. I'm not disagreeing with you. It just reminded me of shit. <laughs> <laughs> a big pile of shit. Yeah. Um, no, I'm not even like. I'm again, not even being facetious. It literally looks like shit like a shit monster yeah and the uh, the other thing with it is that um tom hardy like what why does he always have like this different accents that he does in these movies like i don't know and it always makes it every tough movie to, is a like, weird accent it's like, like he Bane. comes as a character and he's like now what crazy accent can i do and the guy's like you don't have to do any accent he just starts doing it anyways and they're like shit well we're stuck with this now. can't stop <laughs> <Yeah>. him <laughs> he's too um, powerful yeah like, I mean, they had to go back and re-edit the sound yeah. for Bane but this, because he was so un- the, understandable. The trailer kind of solidifies an issue that I have now is where I thought this movie was going to take place where, like, you assumed Venom and the symbiote? What symbiote, the fuck? I think she said. <laughs> symbiote? symbiote? Yeah, I don't Whatever know Whatever the it. fuck she said. Like, it's a symbiote. They call it B, yeah. B, not Bay. <laughs> uh, symbiote, um, basically, uh, that should have... Like bonded with Spider Man first, right? Why yeah, is it? That's the weird part. They're why doing does it, it look? I like, think that was my whole thing. That was my whole thing. I said, well, "There's no, no, I know, no way for this to happen." Yeah, there that's is, why I was assuming there, it was wait. taking that whole t- that comic book storyline where he like moves to San Francisco and like that had was... already been Venom. Yeah, no, I thought that's what they were oh. doing too. But there was, I guess, precedent where the Venom and Ultimate Venom, Ultimate Spider Man, doesn't bond with Spider Man first or something like that. So that's mm-hmm. what they're kind of modeling this bo- this monster after. It really no. is like a monster that, yes, it looks like shit, but uh, no. I'm not, like I said, I'm not in the least bit excited for this movie. I think it will be a horrible movie, um, but I kind of want to, it's like a train wreck. So I kind of want to uh, see what it does. You know, I'm, I'm not saying I want to see You mentioned it. in Discord, I'm curious about it because I, I was a big fan of the Venom character. My brother loves Venom. Yeah, That's, he's a huge yeah, fan of Venom. Yeah. That was his favorite, one of his favorite characters. I, I don't understand. Like, you guys love Venom. I just think he's a terrible product of the 90s. Like, he was, that, he was, him, was, him, do you guys like Gambit? I was, like yeah, I don't, mind, I, don't mind Cam, I don't mind Gambit. Yeah. But uh, anyway, I, I was hoping that it could be good, but no. Yeah. And then, like, know. another trailer dropped just before this one, too, from Fox, and that just was amazing. I thought that trailer was great. Deadpool 2. No, Deadpool 2, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, that movie's, uh, gonna, looks like it'll be a lot of fun. Callbacks. Yeah. He does, he does a Thanos call, like, like, uh, Easter egg, and he has a uh, Goonies one. That was, was pretty good. Hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, that was pretty good. Let's see. We have other news in the Marvel Universe about um, Phase 4 movies, right? With uh, Kevin Feige uh, picking up... Uh... They're not showing anything. What's that? They're not showing anything until San Diego Comic-Con 2019. For what they are going to do with the X-Men? Oh, oh that's, that's slightly different. But yes, by next year, it will be different. But uh, they have, Marvel has flat out said they're not announcing any more films until San Diego Comic Con 2019. Wow! And I don't think you see mutants in an X Men or in a Marvel MCU movie until at least 2020. I don't. Yeah, 2020 is probably really well. Of course, I mean, I well, I think we might get cameos by the end of 2019 or whatever. What movie's the end of 2019? Do we have that list? We have that we, listing, right? No, we don't. Oh, we don't. I think it goes to Spider Man. Oh, I thought it went in into summer. fall. That's so exactly fall. why they're not doing this. Well, there you go. Um, yeah, well, we'll see. But yeah, they're planning on trying to use a lot of them. Fantastic Four, um, X-Men, Deadpool, all of that stuff's on the table. As long as the Fox deal completely well, goes through. So. I expect uh, some like name drops or the, yeah. the term mutants to be used in one of the upcoming mm-hmm. films. I will say, I'll make, I'll make, it's not really a bold prediction. I'll make a prediction now that we we see the Fantastic Four in the Marvel Universe before X, the uh, mutants. Ooh. No, I'll make it. I'll make a bet. I'll make a long term bet on this. <laughs> I'll do it. I'm pretty confident in that. Before a mutant or before, before in the actual the X Men Marvel Universe, uh, I will say we'll see the Fantastic Four before a mutant. Uh, all right, I'll take that bet right now. Okay, we're on. I'm gonna write it down. All right, all right. So <laughs> Scarlet Witch. Uh, well, no, she's not she's a mutant. Not... Uh, what if they retcon her to be a mutant? 
They Rick Hunter out of being a mutant in the comics. Yeah. Right. No, but what if they make her? What if they make her back to a mutant? I, I, you know what? I'll I'll have to allow it because you got me on, you got me on a you know the detail technicality. Right? Yeah, technicality. So I'll write this down. Tony, Jim, mutants versus Fantastic Four. Uh, <laughs> To include just that just includes the Fantastic Four, not Fantastic Four universe. Um, no, no, I will say I will say Fantastic Four. One of the, one of them. I'm not saying all of them. I'm just saying one of them before a mutant, you know, shows up. <clears throat> obviously, See all those like Emily Blunt this, and this uh, John Krasinski like, for Mister Fantastic just, and Invisible quick, Girl. Yeah, quick side thing. I mean, you're giving me like their like Reed Richards or Ben Grimm as, yeah, yeah. as Ben yeah, Grimm. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 that's, that's the character. That's your the out character. there. Like okay, they good. could make an appearance of like, Oh, you know, right. Like, you yes. know, yeah. Invisible Meet girl Mr. Or, or Reed Richards, the doctor guy, not yeah. necessarily Mr. Fantastic. Right? Yeah. Right. All right. So we got another bet. We're, bets are flying like crazy. That's a long-term one, but, uh, all right. Uh, Couldn't lastly, on, be. what's that? Might it, not be. it may we'll not see. be. Um, lastly, in the um, news, we have Fate of the Furious director helming uh, the Mask movie, which I didn't think was happening from Paramount, but apparently it is. Paramount yeah, is in the gutter right now. They need. They just looking for anything. It's like whatever sticks to the they're, wall. Yeah, they're throwing everything at them. Um, you know what? I, I I honestly don't know why they haven't done like a Transformers GI Joe like crossover. crossover. Movie. They honestly should have. Like, yeah, I, I think I mean, it's they were a little closer late to late. doing a Men in Black Jump Street, Twenty One Jump Street crossover, and like yeah. we still haven't got a GI Joe and Transformers one. Yeah. It's been like, crazy. I mean, I don't know. It just to me that seems like low hanging fruit. Like people, like the Venn diagram of people who like Transformers, and then people who like you know GI Joe, and it's like pretty like it's pretty on there. I mean, you mm. basically have GI Joes in Transformers already. Right. Just, like turn them, like just give them like the GI Joe names and. Just make them G.I. Joe's. Right. Or honestly, uh, wait, who does Fast and the Furious? Is that also? That's Universal. Oh, uh, yeah. Universal. Ah, uh, they did a crossover with that. That'd be pretty epic. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's just so easy to do. You know, they, they had such a heavy military presence in the Transformers movies already. It it does, like, it makes sense. Canically, mm-hmm. in-universe, they could easily explain that. Yeah. You know? they're, doing, they're doing a Fast and the Furious animated show. Yeah, I saw that. They and they're doing a Rock Statham. Spin-off. Yeah, Rock Statham. That's happening. I've confirmed. So yeah, um, so a lot yeah. of Fast and Furious uh, universe stuff out there. Yeah, I'm. A, I like Fast and Furious, so I want to see what they do with the Netflix show. Yeah. That'd be interesting. Yeah, that will be. Okay, uh, let's get. Into oh, what also, we're... um, the guy that's playing Han Solo is signed up for three movies. Three movies. So that's right. You know, that's not a surprise though. No, I don't think it's a surprise either. But that just goes to show that we're definitely getting more of him. Well, I don't know if we're getting more, but I think it's just Disney being smart about their contracts. Like, yeah. No, I, and, yeah I think it could movie... be a cameo in another movie, too. It's not necessarily right. full-blown Han Solo sequel, no, but coming up, that we're bet. definitely going to get more. That bet so. is coming up. Uh, that's coming up quick. All right. Um, uh, it is. All right, so getting to what we've been up to. Let's get into what we've been up <laughs> yeah, to. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, I don't know if I watched anything like new. I mean, I'm trying to think of what I watched on TV. Um, I, I definitely watched another episode of... Uh, Lost in Space, which I really like um, on Netflix. I'm not 6. binging it. 6.3 million people watch it's that It's doing well. It's doing very well. It actually looks good, doesn't it? Like, they've yeah, done a good job with the special effects. I was going to say, like, the, like, it's on par with um, Altered Carbon, and some, yeah. of those are some of the best special effects we've seen. Yeah. So, like, they're quali- – like, oh, and they just mentioned they're, they, they're um, selling $1.5 billion worth of bonds uh, to cover – costs of upcoming movies so oh, wow. <laughs> jesus they're like going into 1.5 million billion dollars worth of debt to um finance wow. movies wow yeah. movies and shows netflix is just yeah jeez. um it's, they're unstoppable yeah they are they are uh they've i mean i like how hulu has tried well, with the originals unless you're canons uh, cans or whatever the film festival <laughs> can't can't go there because <laughs> yeah. Fuck them. Netflix just needs to start their own festival. That's what they do. Like, oh, there's, fine, there's, bitches, we'll have our own festival. They don't even like, care. It's like, I don't they even don't care. care. Like, there whatever. has been rumors, they're though, like, that they, they might be... Make they, money. they might be buying a... Um, uh, they might be buying a theater chain. There's t- rumors of that. Oh. So. Ah, not too long ago. I was talking about how long until we see a Netflix movie in movie theaters. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, technically... Didn't I have a bet with you on that, Corey, or no? Is that just... No, the... I think we just talked about it, because, like, oh, technically okay. that uh, um, Korean movie... Yeah, yeah, I remember you mentioned that. ...movie theaters, and uh, Annihilation is in movie theaters here, and Netflix everywhere else. So. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, that's really it for me. I mean, Corey, did you watch right, anything? Well, uh, I did watch something uh, because Batman Ninja came out in digital yesterday. Oh, that's yesterday. right. I gotta, get, I gotta get that. So I bought that. I heard that's watched great. It, and it is very Japanese. Like, oh, is it? Every trope of a Japanese show you, you can think of on display here. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just it's funny how you see it in a Batman animated show um, or, or movie. But I love the art style. It's it's 3D animated, but it's in a 2D like like it looks like it's hand drawn, hmm. right? Cool. And they it looks like it's a Japanese like mural. You know how the you know the sky has those like little arch things in it with the clouds. Hmm. It looks like that, and it looks like paint like Japanese paint uh, art. Uh, but it's animated in 3D, or it's animated. It's digitally animated. It's not hand drawn. Yeah. But it's got that look to it, and it's really well done. There's a sequence that is very. Um, it's like they change the whole style of the art later on, and uh, it's very interesting that sequence, just because it's very like a traditional Japanese artwork, and uh, what, like what you would see, um, you know, in like a mural or something uh, in, in a Japanese place i don't know i was gonna say like restaurant but you know it's just the artwork is really well done but um it just goes way out there and is very japanese as far as like if you know japanese anime it's gonna have a lot of that in it but the character designs are amazing i love like the japanese take on the uh, batman characters you know even just like traditional characters like joker Mm -hmm. even like and um you know nightwing bat like robin's in it and so I definitely highly recommend just watching it for the look of it. But then again, like it's 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 a neat story. It's just it is very out there. <laughs> I'll say that. All right. All right. I want to say I want to check it out. So that's cool. Yeah. That, no, I mean, I was I've been like counting down for it. So yeah. yes, finally. Did you check out the hundred yet? No, not yet. OK, not me either. So obviously I'm going to watch that, though. No, anything else? Pretty much. Very the only thing of note, Tony caught up on like the shows, but Tony? talk about them. Nothing nope. really. Nothing. All right, let's get into our topic um, about the um, retrospect Marvel Universe. Uh, could you guys start this? I got to be right back. I got to take care of something real okay. quick. So go ahead. I'll be right back. Yeah, I mean, are we going to go like with the move, like 10 years worth of movies? There's <laughs> a lot of movies. Yep. But like, how do you want to do this? You want to just talk about them like chronologically, or do you want to uh, just say, like, what are our some of our memorable moments i mean first yeah. of all like, well, about, I, I, I think I, it's i think it'd be best if we if we just did phases we can jump back and forth within the phases or even between phases but i think i think it's easier to just go about the phases cuz like I, I think there's a clear progression of improvement uh in every aspect you know yeah for the most part obviously some sequels as we as they kind of form the plan with what they were doing kind of were like well you're getting sacrificed to be the launching pad for what we're gonna do here but uh and that and that i think is a little unfortunate for some of the directors that were excited well not some of them but like john favreau and josh whedon both were kind of like hey you're doing certain things and that's all there is to it for their sequels um and really weren't able to make the movie they wanted to make afterwards but as far as like the phase one and and for me, I really did like Incredible Hulk with mm. Iron Man Thorne. I thought that was a good um, version and take on the character. And I liked that they didn't do the whole, hey, we're going to get like the backstory and all that garbage. He's Hulk and he's been Hulk for a little while. And, uh, you know, you get to see him try to live with that a little bit. And then with Iron Man, um, obviously, uh, Robert Downey Jr. was born to play the character. Like, yeah. it's, it's like synonymous. You, you don't think of... Tony Stark without thinking of Iron Man. Yeah, and I mean, Iron... talk about perfect casting. I mean, Robert I, yeah, I can't. Just like and, you know, uh, Hugh and Jackman. They bottle Wolverine. the character in the comics after him too. It's like they started to like meld the two things <laughs> together, where it's like it's you don't even realize they're different people. Yeah, yep. Uh, and just the, the the stature, the swagger, the attitude he brings to the characters fits his personality to a Yeah, team. he's got charisma. I mean, that's the thing is I remember. Um, when Iron Man 1 came out, um, you know, I wasn't really interested because, I mean, back then, Iron Man was a B-lister at best, you yeah. know? Like, yep. he was in the Avengers stuff, but, you know, he was always in it. But, like, you know, not many people outside of hardcore comic book fans really 
care I mean, too much. It was it. Batman, Superman, Wolverine, and Spider Man. Like yeah. those were like the top characters. Like, who's Iron Man? Nobody cares about Iron yeah, Man. Exactly. You're making Hulk movies before Iron Man movies. Yep. Exactly. And I remember um I think it was Nick telling me, like, oh I saw Iron Man and I really liked it. I was like, Oh, okay. Like, I'll check it out. And this is like not too long after I had gotten um my PlayStation three, which is a Blu ray player. So I was like, Oh, well maybe this would be a good first Blu ray uh to get, you know, and check it out. And so it was my first uh, Blu-ray, and I watched it, and I was like, "Damn, this is really good!" Like, no, nothing. I'm, about I'm this just character. like, uh, yeah, when you said this is the first Blu-ray, and like, like I, you didn't even see it in the theater. That just goes mm-hmm. to show, like, no. like what was Marvel movies like cinema back then? It was it, nobody really cared. I know Jim and I used to go to the movies all the time, so we did see like uh, Incredible Hulk and Iron Man in the theaters, as well as The Dark Knight. And Jim will always bring this up. Uh, he's not here right now. If you guys are listening, he had to go do something, but. He will always bring up the whole Dark Knight versus Iron Man, which is more rewatchable, but which is the better movie and all that stuff. So it's like the rewatchability. That's oh, his. Sorry about that. That's where I like that birth of that argument for us came from, I believe. Sorry about that. We had yeah. Roku def- technical difficulties. I had to go fix Gosh, real quick. No problem. So, um, We're just talking about your how I think the birth of the watchability. Um, rating was. I think Iron it was. Man it was Dark Iron Man. Man. It was Iron Man because I always talk about Iron Man against Dark Knight. Yeah, yeah it's. It's the watchability, and I was gonna say like as my favorite movie, it's between that and Civil War. Not Civil War, um, Winter, Winter Soldier. Soldier. Yeah, I really like mm. Iron Man One. Like it's really great to like. It's a fun movie. You can watch it whenever. In my mind. Yep. No, we just talk about like Robert Downey Jr. and the character and bringing Iron Man to the forefront of Marvel's like lineup and how yeah. he's that that movie that's... really changed everything for Marvel as far as did. comic books. That's what I mean. Like I think that's why. That's why I like it so much because it's the one that started the universe. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. that's a big um, gamble, and they and it, and it worked. No, I mean, absolutely, and it was it was a do or die situation because mm-hmm. uh, for those listeners who might not know, uh, Marvel in the early two thousands was uh, or even before them. I think they it was were like selling off the 90s? Properties. It was nineteen. Yeah. It was ninety three or ninety two. They started selling. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm sorry. Yeah. Hey, take X Men. We need. We need to get yeah. Fox. Take X Men. We need some money. Here, mm. Sony. Take Spider Man. We need some money. Like they were like yeah. on the verge of bankruptcy. Yeah. And that's why Disney came in and. Whoosh, like, oops, sorry. Uh, they just they were able to purchase like uh, Marvel as an entirety. Yeah. Uh, for what nothing right now it seems like that was like, yeah. like a couple billion well, dollars well after the after the iron man movies they were seeing success uh i mean i don't think disney bought them until after avengers won no no no. they bought them uh right around like when the marvel studios came out mm-hmm. uh but marvel studios had already had a distribution deal with paramount so yeah. disney wasn't able to put stuff out under their name until a little while but it was it was way i, I was i'm pretty sure it was well before our uh, avengers I thought really? it was 2011. Was it? I Let's thought it was 2011. I thought it was well before Avengers. Let's see. I, it. I don't know. Yeah, um, you got it. Um, but yeah, it's maybe 2010. When was Avengers? 2009. Okay. Yeah, oh, it was 2000... right. Yeah, it was. It was early. Yeah, I think it was 2009. So yeah, it was uh, after. That's only one year after Iron Man. Almost. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, the success of that, you think, oh, Marvel's back, and then nope, Marvel's sold. Yeah. Um, but well, they uh, were st- they, still they didn't know what Iron Man was gonna do like at the time. Yeah, right. Well, it was doing well, but at the same time, Incredible Hulk nah. was. <laughs> yeah. I just I remember like thinking like after we got Iron Man and they announced like Thor and everything coming, I'm um, like uh, you know I don't care about these B list heroes and stuff. Like I'm just that's all we talked about. Yeah, but anyway, so yeah, yeah. We'll to get back on track, I mean Marvel had sold off their hottest properties: Spider Man, X Men, yeah, Fantastic Four, sold off all the the movie rights to these studios. Um, so they couldn't make any official things. And, you know, you see X-Men come out and uh, do well. And Marvel's like, shit, we need to do something. And Spider-Man does phenomenal. And Marvel's like, shit, we got to get back in this game. Yeah. And they're like, well, uh, what do we, we have? We don't own anything. <laughs> right, yeah. we don't have anything. What did not? Uh, what, did, what did the studios not want? <laughs> right, exactly. So there's, And the whole kid had already had, like, one flood of movies. Yeah, failure movie, yeah. Uh, so they're like, well, shit, we got to bank on Iron Man and you know getting this casting right, and they went all in on it. Um, and again, and it, also, they didn't get directors that you would think they would want, like big name directors. Like John Favreau was not a big name. No, director, he was nobody. He was way more of an actor. Like you think of this guy as an actor, not yeah, as a director. Definitely. Is, um, uh, yeah, he did a great yeah. job with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean that that is the one that kicked it off really, and uh, like I said, like 
for me, the movies, I mean, Thor, I I really enjoyed the first Thor too. That was a fun movie. They were really yeah. different tone movies than they are now, but it was on a smaller yeah. scale. That's why they were more. Yeah, they so were, Jim, you know. Oh, what? sorry. Uh, what what uh, you'd miss was I, I figured the best way to go about it was just talk about the phases. Yeah, well, I'm uh, in phase leading one. up to it. Yeah, right, right, no, no, I, that's just you know, I, I kind of picked up on Thor, that, so don't worry about that. Yeah, I agree with you. I do like the fish out of water aspect of that movie, yeah. and I think again they nailed the casting with Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. Like, they nailed it. So that really helps when you have a character embody the, the comic book character very well and then play it off so well as um and obviously yeah. take his shirt off and you know, girls yeah. love that. So yeah, I mean, yeah. uh, you know, the girl I was at the time, like, you know, she was like, We need to go see Thor and I was like, <laughs> Okay, like we'll go see Thor and then you know, I could just like hear like you know, like a subtle, like you know, like lip biting or something like that. When like you know, it's just like Thor's like, uh, and Natalie Portman's like, yeah, it's just like, <laughs> even Natalie Portman's just like, mm. Mm, <laughs> like nice and stuff like that. But I mean, perfect casting. I mean, continue with Captain America. Um, you know, oh, Chris Evans, even Loki. You know, getting Tom yeah, Loki, yeah. It just they, they nailed it. And you know what I did appreciate was these characters, like you were saying, Jim. I didn't really care for them. But the movies were like, okay, you know what? I'd watch, I'd watch what happens to these guys and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, and then the way Captain America ended was just like, oh shit. Okay. It was a really cool right. ending to start start the universe, the Avengers, really. Uh, yeah. As a cool way to bring that in, and that was the movie before. Um, I mean, we're not brushing past on purpose the Incredible Hulk and, and Iron Man two. I mean, those clear Iron Man two in my mind is. The I think weakest. the Incredible Hulk came out before Iron Man. Yeah, it, it was. It was the month after. It was the month after. Oh really? Yeah, that's weird. It was June thirteenth of two thousand and eight after May second of my Iron Man. Wow. Um, yeah, that was definitely a weaker movie. Uh, we, you know, you go back and you watch it, it's even. Weaker. Well, you know what? I think you're right, just because um, Tony Stark shows up at the end. Yes. Of the yes, Hulk. that's right. I forget he made that together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, then you had but, Iron uh, Man 2 still after that, before we had Thor. Yeah. Um, they really wanted to cash in on the Iron Man success. And we did they talk a little bit quick. about Iron Man 2 and how, you know, we. it's unfortunate that... It was that, a vehicle, man. Yeah, it wasn't necessary. Like, well, we figured out what we're going to be doing, so this movie's going to, like, really jumpstart that, so... Well, that's what I think happened with... We were, we'll get to that in Phase 2 with the Avengers movie, but... Um, uh, the, the end of Phase 2, that's my mm -hmm. mind. That's my opinion what happened with the end of that um it's so then, amazing. yeah let's wrap up phase one with uh the avengers okay. and that was like such a such a chance another risk that you're like this is not going to work this is going to be a yeah. train wreck this is gonna I, be I remember even talking on the podcast with yeah. you guys like yeah. way way back I know what I was thinking. again listeners we've been doing this for what like eight years now yeah yeah uh we're at 390 and, so yeah and i remember like I think we're all a little skeptical. It's like, oh, I was, can this really I was pay very off skeptical. Much? There was no and chance. And you get Joss Whedon to direct Yeah, it. who was previously TV mm. only, you know. Or and he was also TV. very hit or miss. Okay. He was also very hit or miss. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, Corey and I were, I think, just finishing well, up Dollhouse I mean, at one point there. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, you're like, which Joss are we going to get? Are we yeah. going to get, you know, Buffy Joss? Or are we going to get Dollhouse Joss? Are we going to yeah. get Firefly Joss? Or are we going to, it's yeah. like, who are we getting here? Yeah, which Joss is it? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, I still remember, like, Avengers to me is one of the perfect watchable movies and, and like the definition of a of a blockbuster because even like obviously it helps to have seen all the movies but i think even without having seen them you, you know because i think they even like had imagined like hey we can't count on everybody coming into this having seen even like half of these movies that we had mm -hmm. uh done but they did a, a good job of introducing all the characters where it's like okay this is Captain America. Here's his like little stick. Here's Thor. Here's his little right, stick. And they gave every character um, a moment to to shine. Shine. Right? Yep. So yeah. it was pretty neat. And like even the characters that we got introduced to, like Hawkeye, uh, you know, he he was kind of like put to the side a little bit. But at the same time, he was like a, played a major role. Yeah. And yeah, you got to feel yeah. for him a little bit and um, that character. Yeah. So. And I really love the groundwork that they did there between the characters because, you know, uh, you can just see the way that Tony Stark uh, is interacting with everybody. Like, he wants to be the hotshot. He wants to be the caller, uh, you know, leader, call you know, hotshot yeah. ca shot caller. Um, you know, calls Thor point break, uh, which pops up later. Uh, yeah. In the no, as soon as I saw that in Ragnarok, I was like, oh, man, that's pretty funny. They, yeah. They did um, uh, but you could see the banner between uh, Captain America and Iron Man, like that that bubbling. Different philosophies. Yeah, the different well. philosophy where you know it's like, take a suit away, what are you, and philanthropist, uh, <laughs> playboy, <laughs> millionaire, <laughs> blah blah blah. 
and it's like you know you everything that came out of you from a violence like oh shit like obviously loki was like using magic to toy with their uh, emotions and whatnot manipulate them but it's like hmm okay there's there, there's something here there's something brewing we'll see where this goes but no yeah everyone some... played off well with each other and you definitely saw the camaraderie that they had as a team too once they do come together you felt mm-hmm. that it was real it didn't seem like artificial yeah or it seemed genuine because they, they were other... all really hesitant about the whole thing they're like eh i work alone you know bruce banner is like i just want to be left alone yeah uh, like, thor yeah. like i'm just here to get my brother like yeah that's it like I'm, that's another I'm thing too don't forget they recast thor um hulk in this movie like without having a movie he just new new guy you know, yeah, yeah edward norton got kicked out so yeah um but, but yeah it was fine and, so we, and just uh the and the last thing i want to touch is like that ending sequence with the battle for new york i mean just that was incredible i could watch that just that sequence like if i have to watch avengers like i'm not gonna have any problems but like I could just watch that last third of the movie and yeah. be totally satisfied. Because well, like, from the point when they capture Loki on, it's just really well done. Like, mm-hmm. when yeah. uh, they're battling on the, on the um, Quinjets, or not the Quinjets, yeah. the, the Helicarrier. Helicarrier, thank you. The, the whole sequence with, like, Hulk going crazy. Oh, there. Rampage? Yeah. I mean, that was fantastic. So, like, again, every character kind of gets a moment, and you get to really see them you know, be them. And like, even in, when they get introduced to each other too, you know, with, um, uh, you know, Black Widow getting introduced again, you know, doing her thing, the Russians there. Yeah. Was that, that was this one? Or was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that was that one. Yeah, yeah was so, that. where she was like tied up. And, and then he's like, get the big guy or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, no, it's, uh, it, they really pulled it off and it paid off to do the films as, you know, we could allude to for certain other studios. Um, yeah. It paid off to actually introduce these characters yeah. and give you context to who they are and build this up to make it bigger because it could have, like they said, it could have blown back in their face and been terrible, yeah. but um, and it that, worked out. That yeah. money shot though with uh, them at the end, kind of like circling around, like mm-hmm. I mean that's that's classic. Like that is going to be and the music the moment for the generation. Yeah, like that that music theme iconic now. is just iconic. Yeah, yep, yeah. that's I can't, I can't even like what is the Justice League theme? You know, like. <laughs> Yeah, there's none. Uh, it's not a movie anymore. Um, so we had Phase 2 kick off with two stumbles, actually, though. Uh, you can say that those were stumbles. Iron Man 3 and Thor The Dark World. Um, mm. Going to disagree with you on Iron Man 3. I liked Iron Man 3 a lot. It's not as bad as 2, it's but it's not a good movie. Uh, I was going to say the two stumbles before they hit their stride, and they haven't missed They haven't missed since, if you look. I mean, the movies Iron Man been... 3 made a billion dollars. Oh, I'm not saying it was didn't make money. I'm not saying What are you talking I'm... about as a stumble, then? A bad movie, like not a great movie. According to who? Still uh, better than Rotten Tomatoes, two. Metacritic, or View. So you're telling? Are you, what do you mean? Like, I, I, from like most feedback from anybody you talk to, they're like, again, yeah, what, okay. what metric are we using? Metacritic, Rotten Tomatoes. We could try. You? We could try Rotten Tomatoes. Most feedback. Okay. How about that? I guess. Rotten Tomatoes is probably like a seventy consensus. I don't think it is. I'm pretty sure it's fresh. No, well, it's definitely fresh. I think all Marvel movies are fresh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So even the Thor: The Dark World is fresh. And that was like a sh- that was just terrible. But I do agree that um, Thor: The Dark World was terrible. Yes, that was the most boring movie I've seen, and I've seen it twice it now. It was Iron Man three, eighty percent. Oh wow! Um, I just didn't like that whole that whole thing with the kid. I just didn't like that any of that. I thought it was there was funny <laughs> moments. Kids. Don't be a pussy. What, what did he say? <laughs> yeah. So Thor: The Dark World uh, was extremely boring. Uh, it was those, boring. Those I want to say it was. Bad? Like I'm not in any rush to rewatch it. I have rewatched it. It's it. definitely the least. Um, it's definitely the bottom of all the Marvel films yeah. for me. Yeah, I would say that. And it's right, right there with Iron Man two. As yeah. Far as... Oh, I've never said Iron Man three is worse than two. I even said that Iron Man three is better than two. Um, but it goes Thor: The Dark World as the worst, and then Iron Man two, and then I'd probably put Iron Man three right up, right above yeah. those. But even still, I would say Iron Man three had some like both of those things had at least some good moments. Uh, Iron Man like three Iron Man had 3... the had the Mandarin garbage. No, it's not, I wouldn't say it's garbage. I think I it's just that. A I fortunate. That. But I just hated that. I think the biggest problem with Iron Man 3 was he wasn't Iron Man for that much time in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, you have, you have to see all those cool suits, like all the... the um, yeah, I'm not saying... Every, every, tech every, and movie's got, every, movie, every movie's got its moments. Some, most, okay, most movies have their moments. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Um, yeah. But after that, they, like, I mean, you had... That's when everything kicked off with Winter Soldier. I mean, that's yeah. really... Where, where, they hit their stride suddenly. Absolutely. Winter, Winter Soldier... Go ahead, Tony. Oh, I was, was going to say, Winter Soldier is what like kind of made me sit up in my seat and be like, what? Like, that's yeah. crazy. Because, again, 
Captain America was probably my least favorite Avenger going into all this because I was like, even objectively, uh, from like a comic book standpoint, he's a relic he's a of blue World War. Blue goody two shoes as yeah. well. Not, like, to mention not that, like, much I, interesting I, about him. Right. Like I could deal with that, but like, I mean, he's a relic of World War II propaganda to, you know, whatever. I'm just like, I mean, how are you going to make me really care about a guy that dresses up as a fucking flag? Mm-hmm. So, you know, his movie and an adventure is like, okay, like, I can appreciate yeah. him. Like, I don't yeah. hate him. But, like, Winter Soldier, I was just like, oh, yeah. oh, shit. There was and, some good And, you know, it was, really, yeah, it was really just, like, I can remember the beginning where you know, he's just jogging and he's running past Falcon. And he's like, on your left. Oh, like, yeah. On your left. I, still I, go, like, I have to go to DC every year. And I, yeah. I will make that comment again on Facebook in one month. <laughs> so, yeah, on your left. Yep. Uh, you know, and he has that good interaction. I love, like, where he has that notebook. And, like, he's like, internet. So useful. Like, you know, just like, all right. Like, I, yeah. I get this. Uh, but the moment that, like, really, like, tugged on my emotions and made me have all the feels was, like, when he went to see Peggy. Uh, mm-hmm. in the yep. uh, old people yes, home or you know whatever or... hospital or whatever it was and it's just like you know he has that moment with her and you're like oh like okay like this is really touching you know you know he's like couldn't leave my best gal you know or something like that and it's like oh like okay this is sweet and then like you know she like falls asleep and then she wakes again and then you find out she has like dementia or you know some kind of short term memory loss and she's like oh yeah. like Oh, like onion. It's like raining yeah. inside. Why? Why is this happening and stuff like that? But just like, damn. Okay, so there's more to this character because you know, really, like he is a man at a time, literally and figuratively speaking. He's a man at a time. Yeah, yeah. And I felt like, as far as like having that interaction and then having your best friend that you felt like you let down and like lost. Yeah, um, you failed him. Failed. Him. Uh, and he comes back and is basically. Like a ghost from your past, who's now like on the other side, and and you don't know what's going on there. And as far as villains go, even with Loki being one of the better villains, Winter Soldier as a villain, I believe is the scariest, most like intimidating villain we've had. You know, hopefully, you know, we'll sit, like until hopefully Thanos comes. Be, yeah, but, hopefully we'll have yeah, that but, changed. I mean, since yeah. then, I don't, I haven't seen a villain as intimidating, scary, um, like you felt. Like the presence of when he comes out, like one of my favorite scenes is the highway sequence when, like, they they have the one a like, shield or hydra agent and then he, he rips them out of the car, just yeah. throws them to the yeah, and then yeah. it's like that whole sequence with them and it's like the Terminator and you're like, oh shit, this guy. He, he literally was, yeah, because every time, like, that's what I love about it. He was an assassin, like straight up, he was an assassin because he just wanted to do his mission and get out of there. Um, you know, and he always accomplished that first, like the the shield slash Hydra agent. I mean, he took him out right away because, you know, he didn't want him talking and spilling any more secrets or, you know, information. So got rid of him first and then tried to kill, you know, Cap and Widow and, and Falcon. Um, but I just loved how even even past the interaction with him and Captain America, he still had like some some past with, you know, uh, Black Widow where she's like, yeah, he gave me this. And it's like, I can't wear a bikini anymore and stuff like yeah. that. And it's like, oh, yeah. shit, like. And because, like, even though, like, everybody else is, like, a superhero or an enhanced individual, I mean, we know Black Widow is a badass, you know, for super a human, spy, you know, yeah. super spy, you know, super athletic, you know, experienced combat fighter. So trained it's like, from trained, Earth right. or whatever. Right. So somebody, like, almost, like, killed her. You're like, oh, shit, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah. And but, you yeah. see the fear on her face as she's running away. It's, like, yeah. really ridiculous. It's, it was such a good, such a good um, moment. And that see, scene is one of my favorites in all of the, the films. So. Yep. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. Oh. We also have, I mean, we can, Guardians of the Galaxy we have to talk about, too. We have uh, ten more movies still to talk about. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, just uh, as far, and what this movie did, too, is just, it changed the tone. It's like, hey, Marvel movies can be different than just these superhero, like, blockbuster movies. Which like, is, we can which do is great, else. and that's what I liked about it. They actually added some emotion into this thing that was more realistic yeah. more uh, down to earth like it was i guess hard to say that down to earth but well, it was something like, about it was more of like an espionage which is why it's, my, it's it. my, still my favorite marvel film yeah um i still love i, I gotta talk about this real quick i love the elevator sequence that <laughs> oh, is yes, yeah. i was probably like my that, favorite like five minutes of that movie because well it made cap like like who the fuck is this guy like he's okay super strong and he has a shield whoopity do and then yeah. you see this elevator sequence and you're like uh and they made the shield cool like yeah, yeah. They made the shield so cool in that. Um, and even the music that plays in that, I think it's 
God, I forgot the this name of the track, the, the, but I the listened to that. line before he's like, he's like, anyone does want anybody to get want to get off? <laughs> yeah, before we begin, does anybody want to get out? Right. He's just yeah. like, oh shit, but yeah. Uh, yeah, Winter Soldier, great. It was great. Guardians of the Galaxy was next, which is a no, we switch switch gears, change tones, went lighter. Uh, and again, fun. yeah, like make it a like t- it totally so change fun. it up. Oh, a lot so of fun. fun. So and fun, and I think I think they played it because it's like we have Winter Soldier, which is is a bit darker than what we've seen in in the Marvel Cinematic Universe so far. Um, and to follow that up with something else dark, I think, you know, maybe audiences or fans would have been like, ooh, like, is this a direction I really want to go in? So it's like, yeah. no, we're going to throw you Gardens of the Galaxy. It's going to be light. It's going to be family Which friendly-ish. I cannot believe. Colorful. I can't believe it worked. I, I, that, I think no, I, I, I can't I might believe be, it. Besides Ant-Man, maybe yeah. I'm more shocked about that being yeah. good. I, I don't know. But, like, Gardens of the Galaxy, who the – I don't even know who like, they are. That <laughs> first trailer hit, like – he was like, "Wow, this trailer sold me right away." Like, yeah, that first trailer sold it. Yeah. Sold me on yeah. this movie. I'm like, "Wow, I'm I'm totally in." Hooked, did they use "Hooked on a Feeling" in the tra- the first trailer? Or... Yes, 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 it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Was, yeah was... I remember seeing that. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, ever since we saw Guardians of the Galaxy, as like Marvel, you know, um, Feige and everybody else is like, has successfully made wide audiences care about a talking raccoon and a tree folk. Yeah, yeah. Fucking tree folk. Tree folk. <laughs> Um, is that the non, second? Like, is it the first movie they verbal. really? Is it the first movie they really talked about the Infinity Stones, or was Thor: Dark World? Well, we knew Thor: Dark World. They, 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 well, no, Tesseract wasn't an Infinity Stone at first. It wasn't. Uh, that's they was, didn't know it was an Infinity Stone yet. Loki's staff mm-hmm. had one. Oh, that's true. That's, uh, they Avengers. mentioned that. But that's uh, from but Thor, Thor: Dark World. They did have the Power Stone, or no, not the Power uh, Stone. One of them. That the Dark, either, the dark either. either. Yeah. 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 Whatever. Because yeah. they give it to the Collector. Yeah. Right. Well, that's why I was like wondering is because this is the one where you actually get to see a stone in, you know what I mean? Like it's stone yeah. form, stone form. Yeah, exactly. But so, I, yeah. I, I love Guardians because it was kind of like the opposite of Avengers where it's like, hey, we're going to give you all these movies that make these individuals be really cool. And you're like just rooting for them. And it's like they flip it upside down. It's like we're going to take these losers across the galaxy mm-hmm. and they're all like kind of terrible people, you know, individually. And we're going to we're going to force them into a group and just like. Oh, oh, okay. And it wound up being this, like, really cool, what I consider, like, a modern-esque Star Wars almost feeling. We're just, like, quippy, snarky, like, roguish, bandit-type people rather than, and like... again, like, they just keep nailing the character cast in yeah. like, every time. Yeah, I know. Like, Chris, uh, Chris, Chris Pratt. Pratt. Yeah. I mean, I only knew him from, you know, like... Parks and, and, Rec. Parks Parks and, Rec. and Rec. Yeah, Parks He's, and like, Rec. this goofy, yeah. like, fat guy and stuff like that. Yeah. And, like, in that, that movie, like, where you're, like, he's, he's getting hosed down, you're just, like... Right, and like, even like before, like even the cast and people are like, uh, this talk about the same guy, yeah, here, right? Talk about yeah, like, yeah. like and then like this? he starts Twitter like posting his like workout stuff, and you're like, oh shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's uh, visionary is what that you have to call that visionary for these guys. James Gunn nailed that movie. He got it oh, great. Yeah, absolutely, that um, was wonderful. And a sequel, which we'll get to a little bit later. But we had Avengers: Age of Ultron after that. Um, uh, not great. Not a great, not a great movie. I would say it's okay. Yeah, it's good. I'm, in I forget what it is. Again, it has I'd probably give it seven like, five Veronica, or something. I like. Uh, yeah, Hulk and that's a, it. Had cool scenes like yeah, Iron it Man, had uh, Hulk moments, yeah. versus Hulk. Yeah. Um, you know, I didn't mind all anything when they were fighting Ultron, but like the stuff in between was like okay, or you know, kind of weird. Or like even the beginning of the movie was so awesome with them just like chilling and telling stories. Of, like, oh, that's an impressive story for War Machine, but not for Thor. And it's, yeah. Like, oh, the, the scene where he tries to pick up the hammer too. Like everyone's trying too, to yeah. get the hammer. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. That was cool. Like I like when like, it like kind of shook a second. And you're like, what? And so like, kind yeah. of foreshadowing. I hope, guys. I hope yeah. we talk about this more well, next yeah, week. Me too. Um, um, which, by the way. Yeah. My prediction, I just characters die. I I mean I don't know. I I don't know who's dying in this movie coming up, but I really think that it, that Cap is not going to make it out. We have to. I don't think I've Cap's already, making it out. Yeah. But yeah, we'll see. all right, yeah. So it wasn't it wasn't a great movie. It had um a really shocking character death because it was a first freshly introduced character, and uh, you're like, wow, they did that, and the whole time foreshadowing it was going to be you didn't see that coming Hawkeye, <laughs> and we had that whole thing. Um, by the way, there are. We should probably mention. Do you guys mention spoilers in this before we started talking? No, but uh, ten. It's moves, yeah, I know. So. Um, so yeah, Ultron. Yeah, I didn't like the villain so much. That was the biggest problem with that movie. He just didn't, didn't it, seem impo- like he, imposing. He had the potential to be, but he didn't do anything. Like yeah, yeah, he he did whatever for Scully, but like he needed to do something um, earlier. Yes. Like if he had killed. Uh, yeah, we are freely talking about spoilers. So if you haven't seen Avengers: Age of Ultron, we've been talking right about now, spoilers this whole yeah, time. Yeah, we talk about spoilers. So I'm sorry, but. Uh, if he had killed like Quicksilver like halfway through the movie, or something like, I think I would have given some motivation there, where it's like shit, you know, like 
You got to do it, it because wasn't even like him like getting his hands on Quicksilver either. It was just like I'm yeah, gonna troop just... this other character, but then yeah, he's exactly. gonna be in the way. So it's like, well, because you know, the... Ultron is a very scary character uh, in most of the mediums nowadays. It's yeah. kind of like you think about it, it's like robot. Like there's always a backup, kind of like um, Brainiac from you know DC. Um, but they didn't really utilize it too much. But the character dialogue was so I, I thought it was impressive because when they're in that. Uh, this, the Avengers Tower and they're like going back and forth like um, Tony's working with Bruce and they're like all right we got to do this this is the way to we can win against Ultron and then you know Cap and Hawkeye are trying to like stop him because it's like you know what if we just create a second Ultron this and the other thing um, and there's this I love this dialogue where it's like you know Iron Man's like says something like um, you know we're gonna lose and then Cap goes then we'll do it together hmm. and it's just like shit like damn man like okay like all right like yeah, and get, get James Spader, like he has a great voice for it too, and like he could have been so much better. But some of Ultron's dialogue was just—it wasn't bad. good. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, good. I was just watching some clips from it, and it was just like. I think so. they really pressured Joss in this movie a little bit too much to get it done, and it was more of a rush rush job for it because it had to fit into the certain timeline thing. Yeah. It just seemed like a lot of the dialogue wasn't yeah. really well thought out. Um, anyway, somebody but, had and the other goofy thing I just have to mention, just is so so stupid. It's like. Sun's getting real low. Yeah. <laughs> in that in that movie, now, wait, yeah, it was real lame. It I was like super lame. But I like the callback to it later on. <laughs> it was worth it for the setup. Though. Yeah, it, it was, was worth it for the, the, it was the a, punch line. It was a three year setup. No, four, it was a two year setup line for a punch yeah. line. Um, then we had Ant Man. Um, finishing out phase two which again i think was a good movie and it changed like the tone like hey let's make a marvel heist. movie that's um a yeah. heist film yeah. instead i thought it was cool was i cool. liked it yeah i thought it was a cool idea uh, i haven't actually I like... have i re- have re- rewatched i've rewatched all of these all the way back up to civil war i think yeah and that's... i like the casting of um and doing oh, right. scott laying or whatever for uh, instead of Pink Paul Rudd surprised me in that movie how good he did actually and again when we get into the next movie following it, it he just another setup for what his character can do um so it was a good movie it just um again the villain wasn't great again yeah. like we've talked about this with marvel it's very hard to have they haven't had great villains except for like loki uh and uh that's you know pretty much what they're they're banking on most of the time now and that's why thanos is so important yeah. um but uh yeah so then phase three kicks off with civil war which is like avengers 2.5 um it really is and oh, uh, was it, it civil war right after Ant man yeah it kicked off phase three wow. okay yeah. All right, cool. Um, I've got the list in front of me. Yeah, 6, 2016, good. right after Ant Man, and it, it is like a two point five. It was mostly Avengers. It was actually the Avengers I like better than Ultron. It, it's like oh I mean, yeah, it is Avengers Absolutely. movie. One hundred percent. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So great movie, a fantastic movie. Uh, uh, yeah, can't, I can't say enough about that. Like uh, there was so. What many about great the villain moments. in that? Didn't uh, you have a problem with the villain? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. well you did. I, I thought Mike was the villain? one that's like, he's not really a villain. <laughs> Yeah, in that um, tone of voice, in that exact. Technically, tone of voice. he like it's funny because technically he got everything he was wanting. He, he did. Wanted. He did. <laughs> yeah. He he won. That's what I love. That's won. what I love. And I we were going to talk about this in Black Panther too. He's a villain that actually accomplishes what he set out to do. Yeah, he did. Uh, he got them breaking uh, work, working against each other. At least for for now, we're not sure what's going to happen in Infinity War. But last we see from this movie, they're right. not working together. Um, right. And maybe you know we'll we'll see tomorrow or this weekend. You know. Uh, but maybe them being split apart is the reason why it goes so bad so quick. Like it could maybe be. if they were all together, you know, it, this, could, this crisis could have been averted. You know, it could early. be. But anyway, we, we got to deal with the Sokovia yeah. Accords. You know, that came into this movie, which is you know thanks to the uh, Scarlet Witch yeah. incident. And and that's exactly what I want yeah. to say about Civil War. What I really appreciate is that how it felt like a better buildup of all the previous plot lines in the MCU up to that point. Like mm-hmm. I said, like. We, we see the, the culmination of, like, the Tony Stark versus um, Steve Rogers where, like, you know, they respect each other, but it's a working, primarily working relation where, like, you know, they... they it's different philosophies. Like, yeah, exactly. As far as what yeah. they it's, feel. Right, and it's not really right or wrong. It's just different, like you said, different philosophies. Um, so we see that come into play. We see all these other characters, and, like, it, it totally makes sense where their, their, their loyalties lie, you know, and, you know, how they each throw their hat in the ring, like, I'm choosing this side, and, yeah, so and we get introduced to Black Panther in this, and thing. we get yep. Black Panther's first showing, which uh, was surprisingly and Spider-Man. And Spider-Man. And, that's right, and Spider-Man, uh, oh. which didn't have as much screen time as I expected after all the rumors came out, but he was yeah. on there enough. Uh, so again, 
couldn't I stand by the statement that you could not say he was the best on screen Spider Man ever. Tony did, but I stand by the statement. That I, I saw the go. potential. I saw the future. You, you were the I vision. Saw the future. You were the visionary. You were the visionary. I was. Um, so then we had uh, Doctor Strange following that movie, um, which is a weird visual movie, a really cool visual movie. Let me rephrase that. Mm-hmm. And uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, I thought, did a pretty good job. Um, Tilda Swinton uh, did fantastic. Yeah, I thought she that was, was she was excellent in that movie. The ancient one. Yeah, she was actually really good in that movie. Yeah. Um, I felt like again, it was a good movie, but not as memorable. I think due to the fact that I, uh, I don't know if I really liked the ending too much. I don't know. It was like it was I'm okay. Here to make a bargain. Yeah, I just kept. I mean, it was fun, but it wasn't like amazing. Yeah, I, I don't know. know. I, I I love this. Like it's just I, I don't understand some of these criticisms where you're like. It's like, oh, Iron Man three, like, oh, yeah, I didn't like, like, like I didn't like I the, I hated the, want, I hate like, the villain, big, like, I hate the big, like, cinematic. Yeah, my, I, listen, I've said it how many times on every podcast. The villain for me makes a movie, and I hated the villain in Iron Man three. Okay, I, I mean, I understand a good villain goes a long way, but I mean, part of it is just yeah, I'm the consistent story with too. This. We're like, following these characters. I know, but know? I am consistent in this statement. Like, usually, if a villain is amazing, I will love the movie. It's it's pretty consistent with me, if you notice. And that's fine, and I understand. Yeah, but it's also, of, it's also, um, which is showing good signs for this next movie because Thanos, I expect to be awesome. I really hope he's great. So, mm-hmm. but it's also your perspective too. Like, sure, you know, I'm you may my, find that opinion. this villain's great, it's, it's but my yeah. opinion, I'm just giving you my opinion. But I didn't feel like this was a great movie. Um, and I, Doctor Strange, not that was it was a good movie. It was good. I I enjoyed it, but I thought I I thought it was going to be, I don't know, a little bit. I don't know. The villain could do a little more, but uh, except for destroy the world, I don't know. But it's it wasn't the, really Dormammu. It was Dormammu, right? Is that, is that who? Well, Dormammu was the end. Yeah, yeah but, but like it wasn't really him. Like I didn't like the villains before him. He was fine. It wasn't really him. It was more like the build to him. I didn't really care right. for. The guy with the eyes. Yeah, the guy with the eyes. That's what it was. Um, uh, what was his name? Can't remember. Mc- now. Mad. Mickelson. Oh, Mads Mickelson is the actor, but I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, I know. I just can't remember his name. Uh, so we had Guardians 2, which, again, I thought was a great movie. I really enjoyed that movie. I, I didn't like it as much the first time I saw it, but then the second time, I guess it just hit a, a chord with me. And <laughs> I really, let's say again, I really I liked... Like, I was tearing up, man. I, I really <laughs> liked Kurt Russell in that movie. Uh, I thought yeah, he was no. great. Yeah. Guardians so, 2, just, I, mean, I, I thought was... it hit all the thing. Like, yeah. I, I thought it hit everything. And it's one of those weird things where, like, I see some people and they're like, ah, I don't like Guardians 2 as much. I'm like, I mean, I can understand, um, cause, like, they're not together as much yeah. as they were in the first one, but, like... Well, there was two characters that didn't have any growth in that movie. So I can, you can make that argument. They didn't really yeah. do anything. Who? It was, um, uh, what's his name? The, the wrestler. Uh, Drax? Drax and, uh, uh, really, and, um, well, I guess Gamora had some, some growth, but Groot, Groot didn't really do anything, but... But he was growing. He li- actually he didn't. He literally had growth in this movie. Yeah, he didn't really grow. Literally, in this movie. did he growth. grow in this movie? He started out like this tall, and he's a teenager. In the, in the, oh, that's true. At the end, in the credits, credits. yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't but know. yeah. Uh, Drax was kind of wasted in this movie, but, I mean, yeah, but see, this, this is what I don't understand because like you're just mentioning like character Don growth, Do is like, amazing. Iron Man three was all about character growth, and you hated that. Because but I thought the they undid what he he learned in that movie almost immediately. Who? Tony Stark. He was like, I'm gonna oh. was destroying all of his machines. Uh, I don't want to have this argument again. We'll just <laughs> we'll just skip over it. We had this argument way too many times. We did, we did. Um, I mean, Guardians Two was great, and uh, yeah. it you know it sets things up again a little bit for like, okay, like where some of these characters are gonna be, and I'm excited for this whole you know galactic side meeting up with the Earth side. See, I like, love the cosmic shit. I love it. I love the Earth based oh, stuff too, but I, I love the cosmic a lot stuff. of it. No, I'm excited to see them merge here a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Well, yeah, but like I just love seeing them go crazy because with Earth, it's like all right, we gotta have, we gotta show New York, we gotta show uh, London, we gotta show the Bronx, whatever. Like I, I get it, but like with um, the cosmic shit and and I, here's one thing I do appreciate the Thor movies, even one and two, is like when they show us um, Asgard. Asgard, Asgard, it's yeah. awesome. Like I'm just like I want more of this. Like it's it's wonderful, like sci fantasy. I want to say like science fantasy. Uh, yeah, and we get that so much in space with Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think you have more freedom in space. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> just like um, that. For, when when you when you get to Ego's planet, I was just like, yeah, Whoa. it was a visually a great movie. I mean, yeah. that was great. Yeah, and even the ending with all the fireworks and stuff. Was, yes, was colorful. And then, yeah, and then we return to New York for the premiere of Spider-Man: Back in the Marvel Universe in Homecoming. Yeah, yeah. Um, great movie again. Michael Keaton. 
Great job. Again, I'm going right to the villain. I, I villain. love Great the villain. villain. And that's... The oh shit moment. Like, everyone does yes. it. Like, everyone. There were yeah. so many audible gasps in my theater. Yeah. Me included. I was like, oh, like, it, no, like I mean, just no. no. Someone actually just said, oh shit. <laughs> Tom, Tom Holland's face at that point, like, it, he nailed it. Exactly what everybody was doing in the theater at that if moment. You guys don't know what we're talking about. You, you know what we're talking about yeah. with that scene. Yeah. 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 It's it just like that moment was like, wow. Um, yeah. I just, he did a fantastic job though. Tom Holland is great. The only character, again, I wish we didn't really get anything of Marissa Tomei's character, which I thought was in there for something, but didn't really need to be in the movie. Um, but she could have been just like a, any character in the background, really. Um, but Gotta have Aunt May. we'll get more of Aunt May and maybe in the sequel. Yeah. I, I'm just saying it could have been anybody really. I was I shocked. Mean, it didn't I really. Just... Mm. I don't know. But we got more of his other friends. Like, I don't understand. Like, what, oh, I loved it. I what loved did you want her to got... do? I don't know. I just, I felt like she was there for what, um, did you Tony Stark. The other Aunt May? Tony Stark like, jokes is all she was Toby in. Toby Guire, like, Aunt May? Like, then, like, yeah, what she did, had um... life, she had life lessons for her. What did, um, what's his name? She had Amazing life lessons Spider-Man's for Aunt May do. Tony like, Guire? What? The Amazing Spider-Man's Aunt May. What was her name? She was Sally Fields? I forget who played that one, actually. But I was thinking of Toby Maguire's one where she actually had some actual interaction and input but he, yeah but she feels so antiquated like i can't buy that in a modern day you cannot do that well, i'm not May. saying grandma hey like, yeah, that's <laughs> grandma yeah. really but no, i i i get that and i just like i would like to see more of her characters all i'm saying that's that's what mm-hmm. i'm saying so, i'm sure we'll see in the next i'm sure we will too this one ended literally because the thing is you can't have the aunt may story without talking about Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben, yeah. And I don't know about you, but I'm personally sick and tired of the Uncle Ben origin story. Like, yeah. I'm so happy that they just... They didn't, didn't actually say didn't with great power comes great it. responsibility? They didn't touch it. Yeah, they didn't touch it yeah. at all. I loved it. I respect them so much for, for not doing that. Because that's ballsy. Every fucking time they reboot Batman, they fucking go through the origin story. Even in fucking BVS, they went through it. I'm just like, no. Like, yeah. everybody knows this by now. Everybody knows this. Yeah. Everybody in the world knows this shit. They could skip through that easily and save 30 minutes on a movie usually. And they did. Yeah, they, they did. did. They did. Give them credit on that one. I actually agree. I completely agree with you. I was tired of Origins on this one. So I'm we happy didn't even need it with Amazing Spider-Man either. Like, and we were like promised a different Peter Parker storyline here yeah. with the parents and stuff. And then we just got the same thing. We got the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but um, yeah, yeah. I, loved, I loved seeing uh, Spider-Man come into his own because um, there were, there was, I, I really liked the interaction with him and Tony Stark. Um, I know we had questions about beforehand like oh is this going to be like a civil war presence kind of thing or just like he has like five minutes and like that's it but uh i, I liked it was a lot more yeah it was a little bit more and it was definitely more meaningful because every time like they did talk you know from well, like he played up the he he was he kind of substituted for the uncle ben's like you yeah. know you need responsibility like you need to learn what yeah. it is to be a hero type of thing yeah. so like, that, he was kind of the substitute there but what i really liked about it was that they used everything that came before in the Marvel universe and like applied it here where like this guy, the villain here was some guy who was like cleaning up the shit that yeah. the Avengers and, like, yep. caused. Yep. And then was like, well, I got all this got alien it. technology. I'm going to use it to my own means. Well, he got, he got yeah. like canned from it and then he got pissed and yeah. yeah. So the other day, a real quick, um, I spent probably an hour on Reddit on the, um, movie, like, I forget the, the exact name of it. It's like movie, like subplot or like not subplots, but like things like details. you don't know. Detail, movie, details. movie details. And they're like, did anyone notice that, um, you know, the vulture uh, makes his living by, you know, scavenging the technology mm-hmm. off it? And I was like, like as a vulture, I was like, <laughs> like, my, like, oh, my God, I've never thought about that at all. Um, but, yeah, no, you're right. Like, I love how, you know, instead of like the, the traditional Uncle Ben, like, oh, Peter, it's OK. Great power comes great responsibility. Mm-hmm. It's like, dude, like. You need to take this shit more seriously. Stay in your lane. If you're nothing without the suit, then you don't you deserve, deserve it. it. I love that part. I love that part because that harkens back to Iron Man 3. And that is the lesson that he learned in Iron Man was 3. Was without the suit, like, he's still Iron Man. That's what he learned from there. And even just that part where it's like, if you cared, you'd be here in person. And just, like, just steps out. out and you're oh, just like, yeah. oh, I fucked up. Like, I <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. Uh, and I, again, Happy Hogan had a little good moments in that movie too. Even that, yeah, he that's did. Great. Um, yeah, and then the, the the last thing I want to say about this, because uh, it's a great comic book moment, uh, was where he was buried under that rubble, and he's like trying to hype himself up to like, because he couldn't get out. Uh, when he's like, you know, uh, yeah. come on, Spider Man, come on, Spider Man. He's like, 
talked himself up. I love that moment. They, I think they did a great job. I um, think yeah. Tom Holland nailed the Framing character. Too. Tom Holland nailed mm-hmm. the character, really. Um, yeah, and both, we're going to say it every both, time. Both. Marvel's been nailing the castings. Yep. Both parts. Their main characters. Yeah, and then we get a buddy cop movie. Uh, Thor Ragnarok. It was mm-hmm. like, buddy cop, I guess. It is the best way to say it. That's the way to describe it, but buddy comedy. Uh, yeah. It was, it was, you know, a completely different style of movie. than Much I was, necessary. Yeah. So much. So uh, much. Especially because we got into, you know, you had the Spider-Man Homecoming, which was fun still, but that movie, the Thor Ragnarok, just had so much humor in there mixed in. Again, I go back to saying, like, it was, uh, for me at the time, it was not what I, I think it was a little bit too much, but uh, in retrospect, it, I, I was being overcritical on the movie, and it was it was mm-hmm. excellent uh, when you go back and you look at it. Um, so, yeah, I, I just thought that the Hulk in this movie was so good, like, excellent, and... Um, we got we got a Planet Hulk sort of, which I know that pissed Corey off a little bit, but uh, at least we got something from that because we would never have gotten that movie. Um, no, I, I am, yeah, and that's the thing is, I I was upset with this movie because it made sure that we would never get the real Planet Hulk storyline that I would have wanted. But uh, at the same time, it's better than nothing, and what they did with it was great, and they turned um, Thor into a character worth watching again because yeah. after, after two, two, it's like yeah. who cares about this character unless he's in an Avengers movie but uh yeah they turned it around and made it like whoa um this is kind of cool and Val- Val- Valkyrie Valkyrie was Valkyrie, really cool yeah, yeah I love uh, her too well. and well um you know again I really think they showed a lot of growth with Thor too because like this is the movie where he finally like like really wisened up not not only like as a person but like as you know the king and the heir to the throne and all that stuff um and I, I know it ended with a joke but um the elevator sequence with him and Loki and he's like, you know, you're you and, and I'm me and, you know, maybe we're better off this way, you know, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they end after, immediately after that, they're like, oh, let's do help and like it's it. But like that moment, I think that, yeah, he was speaking honestly where it's like, you know, I, I love you, but we're, we're just not good for each other and, and something like that. Just, yeah, well, we know what he's okay, going to be. Like, I've done this before. We know what's going to happen now. Right. It's, yeah. So uh, I did like that and, um, and, and the, and the Come on, the all right, big guy. Yes, the, I, the he's a friend from work. Is like, I mean, that whole, yeah. I mean, we saw that in the trailer, and it still was funny in the theaters. Like, that, yeah. That's the kind of line you're just like. Sun's getting like, real low. Yeah. Sun's getting real low, big guy. Yeah, I, I thought that was great to do that. And it was uh, such great so comedy. Good. What are you doing? Yeah. So. Um, and then uh, I like when he was trying to get into the helicarrier or the Quinjet, and it's like Thor, strongest Avenger, and it's like. No, this is not match Hulk. Strong as a man. He's like, uh, point break. It's like point four. You know, yes. it's like, oh, it's really uh, I cool. think I like how that paid off. The only thing, uh, again, I like to point out little gripes is the reef shoots they did. They shouldn't have done that. That's all. You know, the scenes with, um, Oh, well, the bad CG. The bad CG, yeah. They should not have redone that. That Change was... Uh, I, I'm okay with it because, you know what, like... It just... It, uh, if they Odin just... dying in an alley in New York would have been so fucking shitty. I know, but it didn't have time. They didn't have enough time to make it look good. It just... You should roll with it. Just roll with it. Uh, I think uh, you should roll with it. Come if on, they put man. It in the it's movie not as bad as... If it's not as movie... bad as Superman. If they... no, it's I not know. as bad as the mustache. It's true. Well, there's a pretty bad background. There's pretty bad green scenes. Yeah, it was we're there for like five minutes. Yeah, I know. How was the villain in this for you, Jim? Oh, know, she was like... good. She was good. I really liked I, her. I, I, I love her. Like, oh, she's terrible or whatever. She no, was I just like she was everybody great. else. I like the degree too, and I don't think I, we've seen the last of her either. Yeah. Are you, are you talking to me the rest of the way like this, Corey? We're just gonna talk the rest of the time. Um. Uh, anyways, no, I thought anyway. she was a great, powerful villain. It was cool to actually have somebody that just really could just destroy everything and kill um, all his friends. Yeah. I'm like, oh shit! Well, I thought that was a little quick. Those deaths, but uh, at the time, I'm like, they didn't wait, deserve. Are they, are they getting anymore. wiped out like this? Uh, I mean, still alive I know somewhere. one of them is Shazam, so he's leaving the universe as it entirely. Um, mm-hmm. Zachary Levy, um, but uh, yeah, it was great. It was a great movie. Um, really good way to end the year last year, um, and. Little did we know that a movie was coming out shortly that is still in the theaters right Let's now. Call it a tie. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Black, Black Panther. Black Panther. Black Panther yeah. is the last movie we are, we have seen since you know before we go to you know tomorrow and Friday, uh, and it is going to be concurrently playing in the theaters still with Infinity War. <laughs> it's going to get a bump. It's going to get a bump. I, because, I guarantee you. Yeah, I guarantee you there are going to be. 
Like, any people who were left out of seeing Black Panther before this, after this, I guarantee they're going to be like, shit, I, got, I need to go see Black Panther. And it comes out, like, next week on Blu-ray. It's, it's, two it's, weeks, I two think. Week, it's two May weeks. May yeah. 9th or something like that. Yeah, yeah it's but. ridiculous how long this movie's still going. In the th- and, and what did it do last week? Uh, I, let me look this up. I it didn't did, like, even... another four or three million. Did I'm it? Assuming. Jeez. I mean, what's it at but, now? <clears throat> yeah, Black Panther, like, we got introduced to him in Civil War, and it he was great in that. People were like, all right. So, like, they're excited for the movie. But then the movie comes out and you're like, oh, shit. This is just speaks on so many levels as far as what's going on in the world today as well. Mm-hmm. And just, like, it came out the, yeah. like, the perfect, perfect, perfect time. time. So, perfect storm. And, like, everything. for me, I think it's just, like, it's on the same level as a lot of the other films. But it just it just hit a chord with a lot of people. And, obviously, the villain, a lot of people are in love with the villain. Yeah, this is he, another great villain. Um and I just wish, you know, hmm. they didn't we do more. We get more of them. Yeah, because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, again, just just kind of like uh, Baron Zemo in the Civil War, he's one of the villains that actually accomplishes his, you know, what he wanted to do. Because, you know, yeah, he wanted to start a war and do an uprising and all that stuff. But, you know, the other thing is, like, he was right. He's like, you guys have all this technology. You have this power to do good things in the world. And you're fucking hiding yourselves in the shadows. And it's like come on, like, you could be doing something with this. And he, he changes T'Challa's entire perspective Yeah. by the end of the movie. And it's, you know, you, we see how it opens. The movie literally ends with him being like, hey, I'm coming out as Black Panther and Wakanda is actually the shit. Like, the shit. Like, we're going to teach you guys how to yeah, do let me, let some me, technology. Let's, let's, just, let's just do this. We're, we're taking yeah. over this thing. Yeah, Wakanda um, embassies everywhere. You get one. Yeah. You get one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and in a way... I would actually say the Black Panther side characters actually outshined him a lot of the times. Well, um, I love. I mean, his companions were the made made that movie even better. Like they're super. And we strong, definitely like, talk about yeah. this on the oh, yeah, spoiler yeah. cast. For yeah, this yeah. Movie we have. Yeah, we have spoiler cast for most of these movies. Uh, so if you haven't heard them, definitely if you're interested, yeah. go back check them out. Um, just type in our search, just spoiler cast. So they, they should all be tagged with spoiler cast. Um, but yeah, Black Panther. I I loved Oyoa. I loved um, Shuri. Shuri was so funny. Oh yeah. my god. Um, it, I'll, this is actually one of those rare moments where it actually made me like a character because anything I had been uh, predisposed to of Shuri in the comic universe, she was just kind of like a bitch. And uh, you know, I don't mean that in like a derogatory just because she's a woman, but like just because like it's like you need to chill out. You are just you are cranky. Like stop. Yeah. Uh, but movie Shuri is just like oh my god, you're 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 the best. You know, it's like oh look, another broken white man for me to fix. It's just like oh shit, like she's got yeah, you know. She's got some some quip to her and stuff like yeah. that. No, I thought this movie had uh, the right balance of comedy mixed into its depth. Like it had a lot of dr- drama mixed in, so it needed that comedy mm-hmm. to kind of lift it up, and it just balanced perfectly. Yeah. Um, so that's why I think they nailed this movie, uh, and it's why it surprised everybody with its box office that it's still yeah. going. I mean, yeah. the, the legs on this thing are insane. How good this movie's been doing. Yeah, and I thought, I mean, we chronicled this before, but I thought it would be around Wonder Woman as like far as like where it'd finish and. Yeah. Uh, no, which, I mean, is, it, like, which was respectable, it. <laughs> which was very respectable. Yeah, it's still, re- yeah, even if it dubbed, you know, it's it respectable. But, respectable, yeah. Yeah, Black Panther just resonated with, you know, on its own. talking about, like, culture his thing, debut, but... like, film. Like, he debuted in Civil War, but this is his first movie. Solo, yeah. Solo movie, I guess you could say, and uh, he just destroyed it. I mean, we're talking about the highest grossing domestic superhero movie <laughs> of all time. Uh, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, insane, insane. Um yeah, so we have um, Infinity War coming. Uh, Variety has them report, reporting that it's 225 plus is what they're already looking at. And I told – as we mentioned, if you've heard our other podcasts, I mentioned once you get above 200, it's impossible to predict because it's there's not enough data to, to, to show trends as what it's going to open to. So mm-hmm. my prediction is still it beats Force Awakens, and I think it actually does 260, 265. Wow. Uh, opening weekend. That's my prediction. My original prediction would be 220. So I'll just stick with that. Yeah, I mean, that's that's respect. I'm going. Well, I'm it going. Sounds on, like it's going to be a lot more. I'm going just out based on off of what Fandango is saying and like hearing that this movie is pre-selling stuff, like out pre-selling all like the last seven Marvel movies, Marvel movies combined. combined. Yeah, yeah combined. combined. And that includes Black Panther. I mean, like, come on. And that yeah. was breaking records with pre-sales. Yeah. In China, I, I, in China, guys, it's eyeing 160 million opening. Three day weekend. That's insane. Yeah, that's, and that's in China. Yeah. Yeah, that's insane. Uh, yeah, I mean, this, you know, uh, uh, Devoted Mike wasn't able to make this podcast tonight. Yeah, uh, and again, I apologize fault. to the listeners. Fault, we yes. just, no, yeah. we, you know, this stuff comes up and life yeah. happens. 
we try to deal and, and adjust accordingly. Um, but uh, I think this movie tops Avengers one. I think this is going to be the highest grossing one yeah. movie by far. Yeah. I know we joke with it about downward trending, but uh, mm-hmm. it, it's this is going to destroy. The hype is too real. The hype. It is might real. be very front loaded. I'm not going to say it's not going to yeah. have a huge drop, yeah. but. When but I do, mean, it has so much yeah. more competition these days. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. It, it's just so much harder to stay on. Top the moving because, it like, up right. the extra week is huge for them. I think that was yeah. a great idea. So, yeah. well, that's, I no, think I was, mean, yeah, you cool. could probably make a hundred, a two hundred, whatever. Let's say two fifty for this opening yeah, weekend. The next week, you could be making the hundred and fifty million, million dollar, yeah, yeah dollars. And where, like, if you know, because obviously Deadpool's going to cut into it a little bit here very soon. But like, you and then the week after that, you still don't have anything. So you have three weeks now where. It yeah. could you do... just dominate. Yeah. Yeah. So do... let's say, like, my projection is, is 250 opening weekend. Yeah. Let's just say it has a 50% hold, you know, depending on how it goes. I think that's around. It could be a little more, but yeah. like, we'll just say, more. yeah. So two, 250 down to 125. You're up to, you know, 375 yeah. at this point. Yeah. Another 50% drop from 125. You're still at 67 point yeah, something million. Yeah. So yeah. you're like, it's ridiculous. Before yeah, it comes Deadpool out, it's, it's at four, over 40 not, million. Yeah. It's oh, not over 5 million. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, this is going to. This movie, be... it could be very front loaded though, but we'll see. I mean, we could yeah. be at, like you yeah, said, I mean, that's we could the be thing. Like, I know if Mike Deadpool. was here, he'd be saying, "Well, Deadpool and Solo are gonna cut into that, and they're cutting into each other, so they're all just gonna." I mean, sure, to a degree, out. to a degree, but like, this is just has the cultural resonance, zeitgeist, uh, yeah. or you know, however you want to say it. Like, yeah. people are talking about this Infinity War. Uh, so much. Like Infinity War, people, and... wow. you know, that are like. You know, like yeah, so casual you, nerds, I want to say, where it's like, oh, yeah, I'll see the kind of stuff. But Deadpool and with Solo, like, this is going to overshadow those movies, you feel. Yeah, okay. absolutely. I, I, so, I do think Deadpool is going to do bad, better than um, the, this, the first one did. But, all I know is yeah, Infinity I, War worldwide could shock people, and this may make this movie a lot of money because it's now sitting records even in, like, South Korea. It's uh, opening day around 6.3 million. Yeah. Uh, it's already open, so it uh, actually breaks the opening day admissions and, record yeah. there. I think I was seeing in France it was breaking records, which is they're not like a really big con- like big mm-hmm. country when it comes to like superhero movies, and it's like like twentieth on the all time opening weekend lists already, and it's just like that's kind of crazy. Like they're looking a at country that doesn't. Holy crap! You know, it's looking at five hundred million worldwide opening, um, yeah. but that could just go. That's the like where it's at right now so it could be well, i mean like now. what's the bottom like what's the worst this could do two billion dollars yeah <laughs> i think that's the, yeah i mean yeah i think that is so it's like it's just like that's ridiculous yeah this is oh, crazy man. so yeah all right so that's coming out we're gonna have our spoiler cast uh this is that's probably the end of the movie cast this week guys thanks for tuning in uh let us know what you think oh, your yeah. excitement i actually was talking to aaron on twitter today uh, yeah, so, so uh, shout out to Aaron. Yeah, I, I, we haven't heard from him in a while. Yeah, write us in, man. Uh, we'd like, like to know what you or think. Or tweet us. That's fine, yeah. too. Um, yeah, everybody else, write us podcast at allyoucangeek.net. We're on Twitter at all you can geek as well. Um, we're all individually on Twitter, if you've noticed. Uh, if you follow our all you can geek account, you, you know us. Um, but yeah, I was on there talking to him, and uh, we have Facebook as well, YouTube. Uh, let us know what you think. Um, tune into the game cast coming up next. Tune in next week. We will have the spoiler cast, I promise. So uh, yeah, thanks. Um, how are we finishing this one? Any galactic new phrase? <laughs> this does bring a smile to my face. <laughs> yeah.